How do you know if you've created a great prompt that will deliver repeatable results across hundreds of uses in your apps and tools? If you've clicked on this video, you've probably run into situations where you're running a prompt for an application or a tool and you've wondered, how can I improve this prompt in speed, accuracy, and cost? The tricky part about prompt engineering right now is that if you don't have a framework in place for measuring a prompt against another prompt or an LLM provider against another LLM provider, you won't really know if you're adding value or removing value from your prompts. And therefore, you won't really know if you're improving or actually making your application worse. I think for a lot of prompts, especially personal prompts, you can get by on just feel. You can get by on just a couple results that you see out of, out of your prompt. But when you want to kick things up to the next level, when you want to scale your prompts into an application that runs hundreds, thousands, and maybe tens of thousands of times per day, you need to ship your prompts with confidence. That's where test-driven prompt engineering comes into play. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can get cheaper, faster, and more accurate prompts by utilizing a prompt evaluation and testing framework called Prompt Foo. Prompt Foo lets you iterate on your LLMs faster and it helps you measure the quality and it prevents you from making your prompts worse. It helps you catch regressions. After this video, you'll know how you can compare your prompts to find the most accurate, fastest, cheapest prompt for your tools and applications. Let's dive right in. So I'm gonna open up VS Code. This is a quick start prompt foo code base that I've built for you. Go ahead, check it out, link in the description. This is going to help you get ramped up very quickly and understand the core concepts of prompt testing. If you open the README, you're gonna see a set of instructions. Let's go ahead and go into preview mode here. And the setup for this is extremely simple. Huge shout out to the prompt foo engineers for building this. Install prompt foo, export your OpenAI API key. I'm gonna do that now. And then we're gonna CD into one of the test suites here. I'm going to go into our first minimal example and then we're gonna run a prompt foo eval. So I'm gonna do that now, prompt foo eval. So this is what the standard output looks like in the CLI. We'll get into the details in a moment here. What I'm gonna do is open up the local web viewer and we can do that using prompt foo view. So we're gonna do that now, prompt foo view. Great, so this view is much better. So let's start from the top here. You can see here we have a description. So this is just the description of what we're testing. You can see here we have a variable, which is NLQ, natural language query. And you can see it's saying list jobs that have run longer than 30 seconds. So this is a variable I'm passing into my prompt. And if we inspect our prompt here, you can see this is the prompt. So is this following block of text a SQL natural language query? NLQ, and then here I'm passing in this NLQ variable. And this NLQ variable is exactly what gets replaced by this variable here, right? So you can see this is NLQ. If we open this up again, we have this syntax here where it says NLQ. So that's getting replaced there. You can see here we're running two models, OpenAI's GPT-4 Turbo Preview and OpenAI's 3.5 Turbo Preview. And already, just by running this one simple test, you can see something really interesting, right? I'm getting the exact same results, but in a vastly different number of tokens. And if we remove the cache, which we'll do in the second, this is a cached result, um, you'll see that GPT 3.5 is much faster than 3.4, right? But let's go ahead and open this up. GPT 4 is giving me a lot of additional information. That's really cool. Do I need all that information? In this case, I don't. And GPT 3 is gonna be more than enough, but let's backtrack a little bit. Let me show you exactly what this test looks like. So if we go back to VS Code and we open up this directory, we can see we have three files and this structure is repeated in every test here, okay? So let's open up the prompt foo config. That's where everything starts. You can see the structure is very simple and this is something that I love about prompt foo. You're able to really condense it down into really clean, reusable testing structures. So you can see we have a high level description. We have our two providers. We have a reference to our prompts and a reference to our tests. So this is referencing this prompt file right here. And you can see here we have this file glob pattern saying, it's saying pull in every test with this format, right? So test and then any string and then dot yaml. This is really cool. Prompt foo gives you a simple configuration file. This is the starting point for all tests. But if we go ahead and open up the prompt, you can see here, just like we saw it in the UI, we have this simple prompt. So the idea is that you'll store all of your prompts in this type of test suite or in some type of centralized location. And then you can hook up prompt foo using this prompt syntax to go to that exact location, you know, wherever, um, you know, wherever your prompts are, right? 
and then you can run arbitrary tests on them, right? So I think that's gonna be like the right structure when you're setting up your test suites. So anyway, let's continue. So you can see here we have our prompt. We have the variable in our prompt that's going to be dynamically changed based on our test, okay? So let's look at the last file here, our test.yaml. So I've commented out a couple items here. Let me just get rid of these for now and we can add them back in a moment. So what does a test look like in prompt foo? It's quite simple. So we have a description. So this is, you know, you describing what the test is testing. And then we have two really important blocks. We have variables and you can see here we have that NLQ variable, right? This is what's going to be dynamically inserted into each test. If we had another block like, like this here and we updated NLQ, we're gonna get two runs of our prompt with the two different versions of the NLQ variable, right? And I'll show that off in a moment here. The next most important block here is this assertion block. And this is what really creates the value of your tests, right? This is where your tests really become valuable. This enables you to build out assertions into your tests. And if we open up the docs here, so in the readme, I've linked a few really important places you're gonna to wanna to hop to quickly in the prompt food documentation. The assertions is one of them. So if we open up the assertions, you can see here there's an entire slew of different ways you can assert truth after your test runs, right? So imagine you run your prompt and now you have your prompt output. On the output, you're going to run different assertions, right? So you can imagine, you know, for our natural language query prompt, let's go ahead and open that up, right? So we're saying, is this following block of text a SQL natural language query? So in order to test if that's true, you can see here inside the test, I'm using this I contains any. So this is ignore case contains anything, right? So this is saying, ignoring case, make sure that my prompt contains any one of these words, right? So any one of these items, make sure it's in my prompt, right? And you can see that here, I contains any. They have a really nice set of assertion types that you can make, right? You can use simple ones like make sure it contains a certain string. You can use regex matching. You can use custom JavaScript, custom Python. You can use Levenstein distance. And then you can do some really cool things that we'll get to in a moment, like my favorite so far, the LLM rubric, which basically lets you run LLMs on your LLM responses, right? So you can say something like, um, make sure the sentiment is positive, right? So make sure that the output is positive. You can say things like, make sure this is a natural language query, right? Which is what we're gonna do in this example coming up here. So that's what the test looks like. And really after you've learned just these three simple components, you have your providers, you have your prompt, and you have your tests, you're actually good to go. Um, and that's why I wanted to make this video. Just by knowing these three simple components and by knowing about PromptFu, you've just unlocked massive value for your prompts, for your tools, for your applications, and therefore your users, right? And that's what this is all about. I've mentioned this on the channel before. If you're a subscriber to the channel, you know that we aim to use the best tool for the job, the tool that allows us to build the best experiences for our users. In the age of LLMs and AI technology, you need to be able to test the prompts to maximize accuracy for your users and also for your business, you wanna be able to cut your costs to the bare minimum, right? By comparing different prompts, you can know, you know, how long does that prompt need to be? You can know, do I need GPT-4 here? Can I use something simpler, right? Um, so, you know, those are just a couple of ways you can use this. Let's go ahead, add these items back to our tests, right? So I'm gonna add two additional test cases and, you know, just never let yourself get overwhelmed. Just take things one step at a time. So if we collapse this, you can see here we just have three items in our test and you know each one contains their own natural language query which then will get passed into our prompt and run three times right so what we end up with here is one prompt that runs three different times right and then we run that two times for each provider right so we're going to end up with six total tests here let's go ahead and run this again so i'm going to close that out i'm going to run the prompt foo eval and I'm gonna run this with the no cache parameter. So no cache, you can see here that it's returning cached items so that you save tokens on your testing. I actually recommend always running with no cache so you can get fresh results every time as you're updating your tests. So I'm gonna run no cache. And you can see here it's running those six items. It's running the 3.5 turbo model and it's gonna run GPT-4, there we go. Great, so let's run, you can see we have no failures, so everything ran successfully. Let's go ahead and open up the viewer. Now the UI should make a little more sense here, right? We have our natural language query variable running three times, and then we have our outputs 
which are running each different provider on our prompt. And that's running for GPT-4. And then you have GPT-3 doing the exact same thing here, right? And so a couple things to look out for here right away, right? Even just with this small test, we have a test running three times with different assertions. You can see here that GPT-4 took 11 seconds, right? 11,000 milliseconds, that's gonna be 11 seconds. And GPT-3 took less than one second, okay? Something else important to note here, the results are the exact same. You can see here in a lot more detail, GPT-4 is giving me a lot more information. It's helping me build out the actual SQL, which is great, but you know that's not really what I want here. I just wanted to tell me, is it a natural language query or is it not? And you can see here, GPT-3 is doing that in a 10th of the time at a fourth of the cost. Th this is really, really important to call out, right? I'm just gonna say that one more time. GPT-3.5 Turbo is doing the exact same work GPT-4 Turbo is in a 10th of the time, right? At a fourth of the cost. Right, we have 200 tokens here. We have 50 tokens here, right? This is massive. If I have this prompt in production, which I do, <laughs> I'm gonna to be totally transparent here. I have the GPT-4 prompt running this exact same prompt for a new tool called Talk to Your Database. You can check that out, link in the description if you're interested. I wanna call out how important this is, right? We have a huge prompt giving us a lot more information back that we don't need, we don't want. GPT-3.5 can do it for us, right? A 10th of the speed and a fourth of the cost. Even if this isn't always consistent, you can imagine that some version of this ratio, right? Uh, 10 to one, four to one exists, right? And, and, and the whole point is with testing your prompts, you can reveal this information, okay? I wanna call it a couple more things here. In our second prompt, you can see we're using the LLM rubric assertion type. Let me collapse the first test case. And you can see here for list five, users with Gmail, and that's happening right here, right? So that, that's this row, okay? We actually have another test validation, right? We're saying response should confirm that query is an NLQ. So this is one of many assertion types that you can use with prompt foo, right? There's, there's tons of them here. You're gonna find a lot more of these other ones really valuable. These are just some that I've gravitated toward to get up and running quickly. I'm a huge fan of the LLM rubric because you can just basically prompt on your prompt to confirm um, you know, the type of response happening. So, so that's fantastic. I'm gonna leave all the information you need to get started and to get running in the README. So there's gonna be a lot of valuable information for you here, link in description, it's all here, ready for you. I know I said I wouldn't make a video this week, but I dug into this and, you know, I started thinking, um, you know, it's really important for engineers, for product builders to see this. Save time, save money, speed up your prompts. Feel free to like, feel free to sub if this was helpful for you. There are a couple other tests in here that you can look at. There's a lot more you can do with PromptFoo, right? We're only using two LLM providers here. If you look in our PromptFoo config, I'm just looking at OpenAI. You know, in the docs, I've linked um, to different providers and they have a whole slew of, you know, all the common providers. Uh, and I'm sure they'll be adding uh, Gemini coming out pretty quickly here. I'm really excited to test that out, see how it compares. And, uh, you know, this kind of opens up a whole new realm of knowing and having certainty that your prompts are great. So there's a lot more information here, there's a lot more value. Feel free to check out the repo if you you know have interest, if you have this problem, if you wanna improve your prompts, you wanna cut your costs, highly recommend you check this out. Just real quick, I wanna call out, you know, what, what, why are we testing? Why are we evaluating our LLMs? Why are we evaluating our, our prompts specifically, right? It really comes down to these three things and I'm gonna gloss over the, these pretty quickly here. I wanna keep this video short for you guys. Save money, save time. Ship with confidence and prevent regression. Right. Once you have all your prompts in a centralized location, you can prevent issues and you can detect them before they run into production. Right. It's all about setting up the right assertions for your tests. And the beautiful part about this is, you know, let's say you have um, three or four more assertions. One of them can fail and that can be OK for your prompt. Right. Prompt Fru will tell you, you know, three out of four tests pass. And maybe that's okay, right? Maybe that's okay for this situation, but you might get below a threshold where, you know, if 50% of your test cases are failing for a specific prompt and a specific test, then, you know, you need to give it some more attention or the change that you just made to your prompt is actually causing a regression, right? So that's really important to call out there. Save money, save time. I think that's pretty obvious at this point, right? By knowing how many tokens you need, by knowing which LLM you need to produce a prompt and produce it with consistent results, you can save money and save time, right? One of the big things for me, I've been working on a natural language query AI Postgres data analytics tool 
I need to know and test different prompts against different prompt inputs with a couple different variables coming in, right? And prompt foo gives you a really clean structure, right? You set up a bunch of prompts and you pass in specific tests and you can update these variables, right? I have two other examples here that are a lot more detailed that are gonna give you a lot more information, right? You can actually pass in multiple prompts by using this triple dash and then all your tests will run for each one of these prompts, right? So there's a lot more value here. I just want to call it a couple things. I think that there is this journey that engineers go on where they first dislike testing because it burns so much time. I completely understand that. I was that engineer once too. But then they come around to it because they realize it actually saves them time and increases confidence and reduces bugs and lets them ship faster with confidence. So I think carrying some of that mentality over to your prompts is gonna be a wise move. It's not out of the question to build test-driven prompts, you know, to write the test first and then build the prompt to fit the test, right? So let, the, let your test kind of drive how you write your prompts. I'm a huge fan of prompt foo due to the simplicity and ease to get set up. So again, shout out to the devs, highly recommend them. I'm gonna be sticking with them for a while. They give a lot of simplicity and customizability. So, you know, it's a great tool. It's gonna be one that's in my toolbox right now, especially in the age of LLMs, the age of AI, GPTs, et cetera. So that's all for this one. Drop a like and a sub for more agentic engineering tips, tools, principles, and more. On this channel, we build full complete tools, full complete products using the latest and greatest technology. Right now, it's all about agentic software. You're actively on the road to building software that lives, breathes, and creates value for us while we sleep. I'll see you in the next one.